Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hockey Hour in which spring springs forth and there's gardening to be happening. There, we're, we're going to a garden. That's what we're doing. So let's follow Gazelle. Come on, master. Hurry up. It's the middle of the night. What's so important? I just found it myself. I couldn't wait until morning. Look, a rabbit turd. A rose. It blossomed. A rose? A rose. Ah, the rose, which has actually been very symbolic in this story. Right from the get-go, when the uh, white-haired girl turned the uh, white rose into a red one. And now, look at that. It, I mean, it's, it's pink and purple, but I bet it's red. <laughs> Ugh, maybe in like the actual story outside of the visual in the novel part of the visual novel Gazelle had over the past year cleaned up the nest of weeds that had been strangling the garden off to the side of a small plot of turned soil swaying in the wind beneath the moonlight was a single red rose ah I knew it was red when did you last year I requested flower seeds but I couldn't get them to grow. I was starting to think they never would. But look, it's only one, but it did. I had no idea. Of course you didn't. I didn't tell you. Why would you keep it from me? I wanted to make it a gift for you, master. What? Why? Rose make wonderful Roses make wonderful gifts, supposedly. No, that's not what I meant. Why me? <laughs> Gee, it's almost like you're the only one here, Michael. Why me? I haven't given you anything. Consider it a symbol of my hope that we'll still be this close another year from now. If we are, then this is yours. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Not just a red rose. There's a red flag out there, too. I don't follow her reasoning. I don't follow it at all, but the sight of the deep red rose almost melting in the d into the dark night was perhaps the most wondrous thing I had ever seen in my life. Next to viewing the dark night on Blu-ray, I had never understood why some people found flowers so enchanting. They were always just plants to me. But... But that one, on that night, was undeniably beautiful. Majestic, and like a young child seeing a flower for the very first time, my hand automatically reached out for it. Not knowing the proper way to appreciate flowers, I didn't gently caress its petals or take in its fragrance. Don't tell me you plucked it, but snapped its stem. Why did you do that? Oh, you picked it. Are you going to bring it back to your room? When I f finally processed her question, that was when I realized I probably should have left it to grow in the garden. On the base of its stem, where I had plucked it, a droplet succumbed to gravity and fell to the earth. With it came the delayed realization that I had ended the plant's life. But it was overpowered by childish possessiveness. This stunning flower was mine. Moonlight trickled down from the heavens, giving a gentle bluish tint to my hands and the smile on her face. You're going to need a vase then. Give me just a minute. For the briefest moment, the moonlight must have played a trick on my mind. The scene transitioned. Huh? Master? What on earth am I doing? A look of bewilderment filled Gazelle's face, just inches from mine, which hammered in the reality of what I had just done. Now I'm going to react over the top, like... <laughs> the thought had just crossed my mind that perhaps her black hair might prove a more... prove a good backdrop for the rose. 
but it was supposed to remain a simple fancy. What was that about? An excuse. I need a good excuse. Um, a drawing? A drawing? Right. I would like to preserve it on canvas. What? Um, what? <laughs> I mean, uh... That rose on its own does not make a very compelling picture. So I would like to include you as an accessory. Wait, you... You want to draw me too? Merely as a background element. You're slightly more interesting than a vase, after all. <laughs> That's all. Staying slightly more interesting. I've never seen you draw anything before. I just never got the urge. You know how? Many, many years ago, my brother taught me. Me. <laughs> I don't know why my voice just like gave out for that me. I don't I don't think I can handle being a model. Never had a drawing done of me before. You'd probably be better off with just the rose. You gave it to me, didn't you? That means I am free to do with it as I please. Uh, I did. I didn't mean to sound so rude. I had no real interest in drawing the rose. But I just couldn't take it back, either. Jeez, just admit your true feelings already! Gazelle had shrunk back quite visibly, and I couldn't bring myself to look her in the eyes. So I fled to the cellar in search of supplies to escape the oppressive awkwardness. At the far wall, I found a rectangular panel of wood and several sticks of charcoal. My materials were obviously nothing compared to what a court artist might use. I was clearly not going to be able to do the portrait any kind of justice. God, what am I doing? I'm just gonna sit here and draw stick figures. I want to bury my head in the sand. Gazelle was waiting for me in the stained glass chamber. It seemed she was still just as uncomfortable as when I had left her. She gave me a fleeting glance before averting her gaze again. If only she would laugh or make a scene like usual. It would make things so much easier. Why did she have to choose now to start acting meek? Alright, just like that. Keep, keep it still. Um, what should I be doing? Stay perfectly still, please. Do you need me to pose or anything? No, just get comfortable. Look away. Why? It's hard to work when you're watching me. <laughs> Open your eyes back up a little more. Um... What? I feel like I have to sneeze. Hold it in, please. Um... What now? Can I see it? I've barely drawn anything yet. As long as our eyes didn't meet, I was able to observe her. My gaze was quite clearly not focused on the rose. But Gazelle. At first, I had regretted my in the moment proposition, but I was beginning to think it hadn't been such a bad idea. Without some sort of pretext, I would never have been able to examine her so intently. I didn't have that kind of courage. This isn't like me, but what was like me? Did I prefer a, being a sharp tongued, unapproachable recluse? Was that what I wanted to strive for? Gazelle was like a gale. Her mere presence dispersed the gloomy cloud that had always hovered around me. Thinking about it, it's practically a miracle that we ever ended up so comfortable around each other. That she's still here right now. Light from the moon spilled through the stained glass window, 
taking on a multitude of pale tones before falling on her white skin and jade eyes. I had stopped sketching at some point. <laughs> Again, sketching one hand. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What in the world was going on? One of my roses had finally bloomed. Or what in the world was going on? One of my roses had finally bloomed, which I thought would put a smile on Michael's face. But rather than improve his mood, it made him go all strange. It made him say he wanted to draw something. I had never seen Michael draw anything before. Ugh, I can't sit still. I try to sneak peeks of him every once in a while, but any time our eyes met, he gave me a stained look that way stare. So I ended up spending a whole lot of time looking at the Archangel in the stained glass window. What could he be thinking? Will this be thanks for the rose? I'm pretty sure he's not the type who would consider a drawing an expression of gratitude, though. If I'm wrong about that, it'll turn my whole world upside down. Maybe he wanted to draw me? No, not possible. That would turn the world upside down even faster. He couldn't. We're close to be sure, but we're not that kind of close. Seems like we're inching that way, though. That makes it sound like... Like Mikkel's attracted to me. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. He compares me to an obese rat and calls me an amateur at chess. Laughing while he crushes me. So that's... Not what this is, is it? Um... Huh? Oh, yes? If it's too much trouble, you're free to leave. This might... Will take a very long time to complete. Oh no, no trouble. You had a very stern look on your face is all. I was doing that bad a job at hiding it. I don't want to force you into anything you don't want. It was foolish of me to ask of you. I'm sorry. Honestly, it's no trouble. I mean it. You just took me by surprise, that's all. Not even that great of an artist to begin with. It's not a talent I was blessed with. I'm being honest with myself. I can't imagine anyone would be pleased to have bad art drawn of them. <laughs> Certainly no fan art. You know, you know what? That just just rang a bell in my head. I wonder if like <laughs> portraits of people back in those days. If there's just like fan art, would you consider that fan art? Like, if there's a famous person, someone really wanted to draw them. Is that fan art? You get them to pose for you. Medieval fan art. Uh, what? What's he getting so negative about? I wasn't the only one making a face. His head was tunneled slightly downward, a forlorn shimmer in his eyes. I had never seen him make that face before. He resembled a child who had just been scorned by his mother. I wasn't at all angry or displeased with him. I was just fine, honestly. I had to get that through to him. I am pleased. Doesn't matter how it turns out, you drew it for me, master. Whether it's good or bad or it is irrelevant. I would... But the moonlight shining through the stained glass was so enchanting. I lost myself in it. I would be happy with anything drawn for me by the man I love. Dang. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Alright. Just like that, we are going to end it on that bombshell. So until next time, I'll see you on Hokey Hour. Bye.